Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'm just going to be improving a small section of my front garden. So this is my driveway here. I've got this very thin edge of grass which has about two or three rose shrubs in it but pretty much it's just weeds. Uh, I think the grass is self-sown. There was never any lawn here or anything. It's just self-sown weeds. There's a couple of nice things like there's a few small crocuses. Um, they're not my favourite kind of crocus. So these are the small more wild form. You get some nice larger crocuses which are the ones I prefer but these are still quite nice. So I'll try and keep these if I can. I'll probably have to dig them out just to get the weeds. I'll try and keep the bulbs and then I can plant them elsewhere in the garden. So rose wise we've got this rose here. It's not very healthy, probably been choked out by all the grass. And there's a slightly healthier one back here. Um, this one is a little, little bit better but probably because it's right on the edge so the grass isn't choking out as much. Some of the roots are probably going underneath that concrete. But again it's, it's not looking great. So I might get rid of these roses in the future. The uh, eventual plan for this border is actually to have a mixture of Nurine Baldenii and alliums, so we've got uh, interest throughout the, in early summer and also in autumn. But for now, I need to plant it up in a cheaper manner. The Anurian Bardenii bulbs and the Allium bulbs are probably going to be quite expensive to fill this whole site, even though it's quite thin. It's quite a long, it's quite a long site. It's probably about 10 meters in length. There's also a nice uh, little snowdrop in there, which I'll try and save if I can. So. Um, what I'm going to do in this video is take out all the weeds, uh, take out all the bulbs as well and put them elsewhere and just get this back to a clear bit of ground. I'm going to put a tiny bit of compost in, a tiny bit of feed but not much because as I say, I'm trying to keep the budget down on this because I've got a lot more to, to do in the garden as you can see and uh, I need to save the budget for elsewhere. So this is just like a very cheap quick fix um, which will look great over summer. So what I'm going to do is going to dig over the soil, make sure it's bare. I then got a load of poppy seeds. These are the poppy seeds here. These are actually a type of opium poppy. And I'll show you some photos now. There was these were actually growing in my parents' garden. They're just kind of self-seeded. I don't know where they came from, but they looked really nice in the vegetable plot. So I'll show you the photos of them now. And uh, as you can see, they're really nice colors. So these are all the seeds I collected from that plant. And I'm just going to broadcast them across this bare soil once I've weeded it. These should then germinate in spring. It's now the end of February. The temperatures are just starting to warm up. These will probably germinate March, April time and then they'll start growing quite quickly in May, June. And all I need to do is a little bit of weeding here and there once the seedlings come up and this whole thing should just be full of beautiful flowers uh, for most of the summer as long as I keep them deadheaded. And that's the plan for this. The, the seeds are free from my parents' garden and I don't really need to put much feed in here because poppy seeds, they don't, they don't need a lot of nutrition. So it'll just be a quick easy way of having this border look nice over the summer. Poppies will also help uh, smother a lot of the weeds. I can dig the poppies out and then I'm just going to fill it up with these, other, with these bulbs um, ready for next year. So as you can see that's the site now completely weeded. I've also dug in some compost and also some wood ash because I've got quite acidic soil. My parents have a wood burning stove so I had plenty of wood ash to, uh, to use up. Now the um, when, it, when it comes to planting wild flowers or poppies like this. You can probably skip the stage where you add compost or add fertilizer. Poppies and wildflowers do very well in situations with poor soil so you're probably okay to miss that, miss that stage but I'm wanting to develop this into a rich garden bed eventually. So every year I'm going to try and add some more compost and goodness to it. Now once I put the bulbs in I can't dig it over so I wanted to dig it over now, dig it over again before I put the bulbs in. That way I get a good chance of improving the soil before I plant the bulbs because once they're in I'm not going to be able to improve it any further apart from just mulching on the surface. So as I say that's it mostly planted. I'm going to be using opium poppies because they've got nice large broad leaves. They're going to flatten the uh, weeds out quite nicely. So uh, you can use normal poppies or wildflowers but you just have to weed a bit more. Or if you're not bothered about the weeds you can just let them grow. Um, you'll probably still get loads of poppies even if I just sowed the seeds now. There could be a few roots from the from the grasses, so and there's also going to be a lot of dormant seeds in this soil. So I'm going to let this uh, be untouched for about two weeks, maybe a month. Let all the the uh, uh, dormant seeds come up and any of the roots to appear. I can then remove them and then I'll sow the poppies. That way I'll have a lot less weeds. If I was to sow the poppies now, there would probably be a few weeds coming up as well. That wouldn't be a big issue because. Um, the poppies are quite vigorous, they probably outgrow most of the weeds. But the issue is that I'm going to be wanting to plant this out with bulbs in the future. I want to make sure there's not any weeds at all because once the bulbs are in, weeding will be a lot more difficult. So I also gave the roses a prune. Now I prune these a bit higher than I would normally. Um, normally I would probably, these aren't particularly large uh, shrub roses, so I'd normally prune them down to about one foot. I've left most of them about two foot tall. The reason being the poppies are going to grow about a foot or two tall. And so if I was to prune these down to one foot, the poppies would probably start to 
overshadow and uh, get in the way of the roses. But with leaving these about two foot tall, it means that when these grow up in spring and start flowering, these will probably be a meter in height, three or four foot possibly. So they'll be above the poppies. So the poppies won't uh, shadow out the roses too much. And actually come next autumn, I'm probably gonna dig out these roses and just have this as, uh, as beds for, for bulbs. So that's all for this part of the video. I'll see you in a few weeks time when I'll be uh, probably hurrying over some of the weeds and planting the poppy seeds. So it's now three weeks later. Fortunately, there's not actually been too many weeds growing. It's been warm enough for any weed seeds to come up uh, and there's been enough rain as well, but there generally hasn't been too much. So you can see one or two very tiny ones coming up, um, but all in all, it's looking pretty good. Now there are a few perennials like such as um, these dandelions here and a couple more. There's also a lot of alliums um, that have started coming up. So I might just leave these because they're in the middle of the rows, a bit hard to get rid of. I'll see how they are. So hopefully they've got some nice flowers on them and then come autumn, I'll probably dig them out and transplant them when I transplant the roses. Further along, there is a couple of um, crocuses that I missed. I'll probably leave them for now because they're in bloom. I did transplant the ones previously and I'll show you them in a second. And then another bit of dandelion as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hoe this over gently to kill any small weeds that are coming up. There might be some very small ones. And then also dig out the dandelions as well. So these are the bulbs I dug out a few weeks ago. There's a few tulips, a uh, few uh, crocuses as well. The crocuses have actually gone over. They don't last as long if you disturb the roots. Um, but you can see the leaves from the crocuses and the tulips will hopefully flower. They might be a bit stressed with the transplanting, but at least I've saved them. So I've now sown the seeds and then just gently tickled the surface of the soil. I just wanted to slightly work over the surface of the soil because although the poppy seeds need to be the sur near the surface to germinate, the risk is if a, a, a flock of birds suddenly came over, or if there was a strong wind, it could blow away all the um, all the surface seeds, or the birds could eat all the seeds. So if I mix a few underground, if that, if that does occur, at least there'll be some lower down, and they should come to the surface through natural weathering and replace any that get get lost. If there is anything is anything that causes them to get lost, but they should all do fine. What I'm going to do now is keep this well watered. Um, these seedlings are going to be very small when they first come up, so they'll need to be kept damp. If there's a dry spell, what will happen is the, the roots will dry out and they will die. The worst case scenario is we get rain now, and then it doesn't rain again for several weeks because that starts the germination and then the plants die before the roots can get established. So I'm going to water it now and then just water it whenever the surface of the soil looks dry until I get some young plants started. Once the young plants are growing up, unless we get a particularly dry spell, I won't need to water this again. And when I sowed the poppy seeds, I did actually put a really good covering down. I want to try and get as many plants established as possible. The reason being, I want to get them to smother all the weeds out. I could have sown probably about 10 or 100 times less seeds, and this would still have been filled by poppies by the end of the season. But I don't want any weeds to start getting established at the beginning of the year when they're quite sparse. I want it to be covered in leaves almost straight away. That way, none of the weeds can get in and they won't be able to get established before the poppies come up and completely smother everything. So that's about it for this video. I'll see you towards the middle of summer when these are growing well. There should be big lost leaves by then and uh, they should be flowering probably June or July time. So it's now actually quite a few months later, it's the beginning of July. I was hoping to do a few updates between the last section of the video and this section, but I've just had quite a few busy months so I've not been able to. So I'd like to give you an update of how it's doing now. We've actually got the first flower open this morning, um, but generally the growth is looking pretty good at the moment. So since that last video we did have very good germination. As you can see, it's pretty much completely covered in, pop in poppies now. There are some sections which are growing better than others. So the soil was particularly bad, even though I had enriched it and I had given it a bit of a feed. The plants were growing very slowly and not very well. It could also be because the, the weather we had in spring was very poor. We had very dry weather in April, then a very wet, cold May, and then it's been pretty much drought all of June. So the weather wasn't conducive for good growth. So the plants were really struggling. I decided to then give them a feed and, um, and also give them quite a bit of water. That seemed to really help them on. And then what I did is I did a little bit of weeding, but generally the weeds haven't been too bad. Because these plants have grown so well, they've absolutely smothered out all the other weeds. There's just a bit of weeding here and there. You can still see there's a couple of um, dandelions starting to come up. And I just need to do a bit of weeding every now and again. As long as I keep on top of it, now that these are well-established plants, there'll be so much competition for nutrients and water and light that these will completely smother out all the weeds. So I'm not too worried about the weeds anymore. So I'll show you the first flower that's come up, which is this one here. Now, unfortunately, it's nothing like the, the seeds that I sowed. The parent plant of this, I'll show you a photo again, has lovely red petals. It has that cross color like it does here, the dark cross, and it has really frilly edges. This one 
it doesn't seem to have frilly edges and it's purple so I'm not sure why that one's come up like that we'll see what the rest of them come up like now there was purple ones flowering nearby so there could have been a bit of cross pollination we'll just have to see how they do um, but I'm hoping for some more to come up that will be hopefully a bit more red a bit more of that frilly pattern so it will we'll look a bit nicer but that's about all for this video update. I'll see you in a later part of the video, which will probably be a few weeks later. We'll see a lot more growth and hopefully a lot more flowers. And I'm expecting this to get close to the height of the top of the fence there. At the moment, they vary in height quite a bit. This section here always did a lot worse. There seems to be some very poor soil in this area. And actually, there's a Californian poppy that has just self-seeded itself, so I've left that. Whereas the section down at the end here, the soil must be a lot richer. You can see these are much taller, bigger, healthier plants. I don't know why that is, but these are, must be a better soil in this section. And then over here, the middle section, I'll probably actually take this rose out. This rose has died off at the top, and it's just now the rootstock that's coming through, which is a wild rose. So I need to dig that out. And also the plants that weren't sure what they were, that were some kind of allium, they just seem to be a t uh, possibly just garlic. They're just not coming up with any flowers and they're starting to die off now. Really strong garlic smell and the bulbs even look a bit like garlic. So I think this might actually just be some garlic someone planted years ago and it's just been spreading by itself. Um, so I would definitely be taking that out before I finish off the bed. And finally, I will show you the rose at the end here. This rose has done really well. It's quite an unusual one. It starts off with yellow flowers and then the flowers go darker and darker until they get to that nice red colour. So you can see there, they start off with a bit of red, then they go kind of a more yellow as they open, with just a bit of red on the outside. They kind of go a more peachy colour, uh, more of a pink colour, and then a nice dark red colour. So it's quite a nice rose, not much fragrance, but uh, definitely keep that in the garden somewhere, probably transplant it. But otherwise, good growth on the opium poppies. I just need to make sure that I take out any more existing weeds. There are a few grasses coming through, but generally, as these poppies are so well entrenched now, the root system is going to outcompete these, these grass plants. And also with the amount of leaves, they'll smother out the light and kill off the grass. So a bit of additional weeding, but I think the poppies are starting to do their job and they're starting to smother out all the weeds. So as I say, I'll see you in a few weeks' time. Hopefully this whole thing will be absolutely covered in flowers. So it's now only about a week later, but as you can see, the poppies are now in full bloom and looking really nice. So I'll just quickly talk to you about the different flowers that have come up. So the original parent plant was a bit like this one here. It had the, um, uh, the red petals, uh, black cross in the middle, and just slightly frilly on the edges. But we've got a whole load of variation in, in the different seedlings that have come up. And so it's interesting to see uh, how much genetic variation there is. You can see some here have extremely frilly edges. Other ones are just a little bit more on the purple side of red, such as this one here. Other ones are definitely much more purple. That one's definitely a much more of a purple colour. So there's a whole mixture of different ones. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to dry these over the summer. What I will do is I'll deadhead most of the, the, the flowers. As you can see, what tends to happen is they send up the first flower and then they send up a second one. But if I keep deadheading them, this, these should actually flower for most of the summer. If I was just to leave them to set a seed, they would put all their energy into the seed and they would probably stop flowering quite soon. But you can see if I cut this one off here, this one will come off and flower. And then further down on the same stem of this plant, there's these other dormant buds down here, which are just waiting to come up. They won't come up if all the energy is going into the other seed heads. But if I cut those seed heads up, the energy will, they will start putting energy into this flower bud and we'll have repeat flowering throughout most of the summer. And as it's middle of July, we've got at least two months left of favourable growing conditions. So what I'm going to do is, the ones that I like the look of, whilst they're still in flower and open, I'm going to tie a little a bit of uh, twine around the stem so I know which ones are like. Because once the, um, once the petals fall off, there's no way of telling what that flower looked like. So I won't be able to tell if that's the variety I want to keep or not. So tying a bit of thread around there, then when the petals fall off, I know not to a deadhead these ones, keep the, the seeds from them, and then I can just grow them year after year. And the more I select them for the variety I like the look of, the more the, the, the children of that plant will look more like the ones I'm looking for. So at the moment there's quite a lot of variation, the variation will reduce over time, and I could breed new varieties if I wanted to. So for example, if I kept picking ones with purple flowers, and eventually have all the, 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 the plants coming up as purple, I could go for more and more frilly petals and eventually they'll be really cut with lots of frilly petals. So I'm just going to pick the ones I like. I think the ones I like the most are probably the ones with a nice black cross but without this kind of bit in the middle so it's more defined, more like this one here. Um, but with a little bit of frilly petals. So I'll probably start collecting them and um, kind of breed my own variety, see how it goes. I might try two different ones, maybe I'll breed one at my parents' house, one with less frilly petals 
a bright red, more like this one. Um, and the ones at my house I may breed for the extremely frilly petals like that. And uh, see if I can get two different varieties. But they're, they're growing well. The weeds are mostly kept at bay. I still need to take out this old um, root stock from an old rose. And there's a few weeds coming up. But generally the weeds have been smothered. So it's working quite well. And I think that's about the end for this update. You'll probably see this bed in another video. Where I'll be planting it up with the bulbs I'm hoping to put in here permanently. The Nurine Baldenii and the Alliums. And that'll be like more of a permanent feature. This is just a little experiment, as I say, to, to help uh, suppress all the weeds and just have some nice colour. As an example, you can see this one here doesn't have any frilly edges on the petals, so that, that shows you how much they vary from no frills at all to very frilly, the purple, lots of different types of uh, and different variations. So as I say, if I wanted to, I could select a few different types and, and breed my own colour uh, or a pa uh, flower pattern.